welcome to the One to Nine podcast for interesting insights and knowledge from animals and other beings within multidimensional realms. Hello. Welcome to another One to Nine podcast. I'm here with Diana. And I'm here with Karen. And look who else is here. Yeah, Ollie's here too. And then we have another guest. The guest today is Anthony. <laughs> Angelo. Angelo. <laughs> oh, shoot. Sorry, Angelo. This is Angelo the Dragon, um, who we featured on last week's podcast. And we had, he had fallen through the cosmic atmospheres and landed in my house. And his, we called in his mama and it turns out he has many, many siblings. How many, Diana? Well, apparently there were like seven in all. So he's got six siblings. Six siblings. So he'd be the seventh. Yeah. Oh, wow. And he's the runt. We told them that they could go and they were very tired. And we told them they could go and stay at Kingman Park, which is not too far from here and have a peaceful time. And the mother and the other siblings went and Angela went too, but now Angela's back. And one of the reasons why this is a bit of an issue is because Ollie doesn't really want him here. And the other issue is that Ollie says he's going to get really big <laughs> and he won't be able to fit in the house. And there may be other reasons too, but so far that's all we've discerned. Um, so today we're going to ask Angelo why he came back. Yeah, poor Angelo. Uh, I think I think perhaps he came back because... He wasn't having such a good time of it. I mean, he was the runt, and so he gets less of everything. Um, it's not like his mama. So, like, we'll make sure he gets what he needs. It's like every dragon for themselves, you know. So is that because the pushed mama's, away? Is that because the mama's extra tired, or is she just like that? I don't know. I think she's extra tired. So anyway, he kind of like flew back here. Or transported himself back here because it's nice and safe. Okay. And warm. And warm. Okay. And not rainy. Yeah, it has been raining since since they left for Kingman Park. <clears throat> Do you hear that, Ollie? It's been raining. Ollie's like, I like to go out in the rain. <laughs> <laughs> then I think Ollie likes to come back in. <laughs> well, Does Angela need a big hug right now? Yes, I think so. All right. Well, let's let's send him a little loving hug. Yeah. Maybe we should ask Ollie what, if his feelings towards Angelo have changed a little bit now that he knows that, well, Angelo is not going to be here forever. He'll be here for, I don't know, a couple of days. Then it'll go away. Okay. I'll take him. You'll take him if you need to. You hear that, Ollie? Hey, Ollie. Uh, he's walking away from us now, so he must not, he must be a little indifferent and not so adamant to say, no way. <laughs> As he was. No way, time. no way. If you can't the last take time, Angelo. The last time. No way you can't take him. <laughs> well, we could become friends. I don't really know. So, Angelo, can you tell us a little bit about why you, how, you know, what happened that you fell through the cosmic ceiling of Earth? Well, this big tear appeared. Tear? Tear. Tear, tear in the ceiling. Yeah. It was actually kind of scary because... Everybody who was along there, kind of like they were hanging on for dear life to the edges of the tear. And they fell in, a lot of them fell in too, or is he the only one that fell through? No, uh, there is a number, well, not just dragons. There were all kinds of beings there, uh -huh. right? And then the tear appeared. And then whoever was on the tear, they just, either they hung on for dear life or they end up falling through. Angelo being so like small and runty and weak, he couldn't hang on and his mother didn't save him. And so like he fell through. But um, a lot of them, I mean, you'd be thinking to yourself, well, if they can fly anywhere, right? Even if they don't have wings, these are multidimensional beings, right? They just transport themselves. Right. Why on earth would they be falling through, right? Why couldn't they just so like transport themselves, do something to, to, mend the tear themselves well that might be two whole different issues i guess it depends on what caused the tear does uh anthony know what caused the tear angelo, angelo. angelo. sorry no he doesn't know he's just a little baby okay no he doesn't know 
and maybe the terror caused some kind of gravitational force that we don't understand that pulled on. Well, apparently this this is not rare. Mm -hmm. These tears happen a lot. Okay. It's only the unfortunate cases like this one where so like a little baby who's kind of a week fell through. Most of the others were were okay. Okay. So was that why the mother was tired? The mother was tired before, but there's something, okay. The tears are caused by something happening to the energy in that particular space. It weakens. And is it weakened by an event on the earth, like a, a volcano erupting or a solar flare? Um, there are many causes for these weakenings. Not, as, not all of them are from the earth. Some of them are from things in the universe and in the galaxy and in whatever, you know, space we can't see. Mm -hmm. But but they all seem to fix themselves somehow. So this, the tear is fixed now, right? Um, Does that mean they can't go back through it? I don't know. I was just thinking that. Um, maybe this is making the, the Mala dragon more tired because she's trying to figure out how to get back. Or she's in a different energetic field and that could be wearing her out. Yeah. You know, when your energy's still aligned. It's right. tiring. Yeah. Oh, no. Um, <laughs> well, you know, this makes the problem so much harder. It's not just so like. Well, we're guessing. Is that what the mother, can the mother answer it from a distance? Answer the question? Oh, um, uh, yeah. I mean, she was tired before this happened because of something happened with the energy in that space that they weren't happening which caused the terror. And then also um, coming through to the earth plane, it's like that made her more tired. Oh, okay. Oh, no. <laughs> so she might not have the strength to transport herself back or fly back or whatever. Oh, no. Forever or for a while? Oh, my gosh. I don't know. Is that how other dragons get stuck here on earth? Or are they stuck here or do they choose to come? No, they choose to come. Okay, so this is the year of the dragon, according to the Chinese calendar, 2024. Yes. So what does that mean? Does that mean that the earthly plane will have more dragons, be, will be visited by more dragons? I actually don't know what it means. I wonder if there's some one of our uh, helpers in the creative field that could answer that question. Who? The dragon expert. A dragon expert. Can we call on a dragon expert to let us know? And it may be that these year of the dragon and the energy of focusing on the dragon and other dragons can be helpful. It could be helpful. So, um, okay, let's call in a specialist. Some kind of sacred divine being who's a specialist in dragons. Okay. All things dragon. Earthly and cosmic and... Yeah. Okay. So I'm asking for a, for a sacred divine being who's a specialist in dragon knowledge and uh, dragon wisdom mm -hmm. and dragon lore. So there's somebody coming through. Excellent. They've got red hair. <laughs> awesome. Is there a reason why they have red hair? <laughs> I don't know, but they just have red hair. Um, Do they look otherwise like a human too? No, no, yeah. I mean, they look good. They've got so like a, a head and a red hair, a very ruddy face, too. Hmm. Where on this plane are they from? Oh, I, I, it doesn't, okay, matter. For, it doesn't matter. I have to ask, first of all, are they a sacred divine? Are they sacred divine beings? Yes. He said yes. Actually, there's two of them. Oh, a man and a woman. Interesting. Both with red hair? Yes, both with red hair. They're kind of like dragon handlers. Okay. Um, dragon handlers. Interesting. Dragon handlers. Okay. There's, well, which is where, so not, then the second question I ask, uh, where do you get your expertise from? So uh, they're, they're both saying, oh, I have to ask the woman, are you a sacred divine being? Yes. So they're both sacred divine beings. <laughs> and, um, they're saying they got their expertise from 
thousands of years of living and working with all kinds of dragons. Dragons on Earth, when when dragons were kind of like more more prevalent here, and then dragons in in I don't know what you want to call it in the ether or okay. dimensional space, right? Fire eating dragons? Do they know how to handle fire eating dragons? Yeah, they handle it. All kinds of all dragons. Dragons. Okay. Yes. And uh, they actually specialize in, you know, well, they're giving classes to people who want to handle dragons, but also classes in riding dragons. Oh. You know. <laughs> Very interesting. <laughs> Isn't it? Yeah. Okay. So this is one of the things they love to do. They love to sort of like fly around on on their companion dragons. Okay. How big are these dragons they fly around in? On um, oh, they're they're big. The wingspan is uh, ooh, twice the size of your room here, like thirty feet. Yeah. Amazing. I know. Okay, so it all depends. Also, the dragons can increase in size oh. and decrease in size, just like well. Handlers is a bad word for it because mm -hmm. they're, I don't know why they call themselves handlers. Anyway, they work with dragons. Mm -hmm. um, they can also increase in size and decrease in size. They can okay. get pretty small depending on where they want to so they can into. So they can work on any size dragon. Yeah. And they can make it any size. They can make themselves any size. The dragons can make themselves any size too. Right. So these Maybe they call themselves dragon handlers because they can dragons to ride people around and they can help dragons that are not well and they can direct dragons that are right. So lost. they're they're more like assistants. Oh, assistants to the dragons. Okay. Right. You know, giving aid. Mm, all right. And they'd be perfect for this case. Right. You know, right. they yeah. can help the mother and they can help. I'm not going to say his name because I always get it wrong. <laughs> Angelo. 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 They can help Angelo. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Angelo. It's really not. It's not about you. It's about me and names. <laughs> so. Okay. So the, the specialists are here. Right. Okay. okay. Awesome. Thank you for coming. Yes. Thank you very much. Now, and this is what we want you to do. There's a family of, well, not, there's a mother and six baby dragons off in a park. We've got the seventh baby dragon here. What we want you to do, and, and for some reason, the baby dragon fell through a tear in multidimensional space. And then we found the mama dragon and the siblings who came to get the rut that had fallen through. But it turns out, for whatever reasons, they're like exhausted. They're lacking energy. Their energy levels have changed somehow because they've been on this the earthly plane. And they need to get back to where they were. So, yeah, they're saying, yes, this is perfect for us. We can handle this. Maybe that's why they're called handlers, because they're always saying, we can handle this. All right. <laughs> Instead of saying, we can assist this, this is no, that's not a good thing to say. <laughs> no, it's no fun in that. No, no. Right. Now, they come equipped with everything. Okay. Right. Um, well, what kind of gear do you need to help dragons? Well, in this case, right. Um, a bassinet for well, Angelo. You know, the first thing is because their energy is so low. They came, they, I mean, they're, I guess they're always carrying around this, this potion. Um, Specific to dragons. Yeah. So, so I don't want to like reach out and take a sip, do I? Um, not unless you want to start breathing fire. <laughs> <laughs> I come in handy. <laughs> no, they wouldn't let you do oh. that. All right. So, yeah, that would not be good for you. <laughs> okay, thank you for looking out for me. <laughs> so they're going, okay, what they're going to do is they're not going to be bringing back the mother and the siblings here. They're going to go over to Kingman Park and they're going to 
with their with their energy potion and minister to them over there. And then they're going to come back here. Oh, well, OK, before they go, before they leave for King, King Park, they're going to give Angelo some of the energy potion, which theoretically, hopefully it will kind of like revive him a little bit. And he probably needs more because he's the route. So they're making sure he gets enough. OK, and then they're good. Now they're going off to Kingman Park to deal with the rest, with the mama and uh, other siblings. So this energy potion, will Angelo remain a run or will this speed up his development? Oh, well, um, uh, he could remain smaller, but at least he will have enough energy to deal with his runness. <laughs> 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 I think we just made up a new word there. I think so too. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Okay. <laughs> okay. So they're they're going to be doing that now. We we can sort of like segue off into some other t topic, dragon related, because uh -huh. they need time to to do their work. Okay. Okay. So let's see. So this, oh, we can go back to the year of the dragon. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Let's let's talk about the year of the dragon. What does that mean for dragons everywhere and for the earth? And um, is there any advice that we should be heeding this year that's different from other years? Okay. Well, what does the year? What does it? What do dragons symbolize? They symbolize power, energy transformation really transformation <laughs> who are you asking right now the dragons oh the dragons themselves okay yeah, yeah. um and you know i mean they're they're just sort of like same qualities that they have themselves but what about magic do they have a oh yeah magic mm -hmm. i mean they can be gentle too uh, are they generally kind or are they sometimes fierce or? Oh, it's a fierce kind. I mean, because there's so many of them, they've got so many diverse qualities. Uh, so some, some are not, some of them breathe fire, some of them don't. Um, but they've got several things in common. They do fly around. Okay. Okay. All of them can fly. Yeah. And all of them can kind of like... It grow in size and, and decrease in size. They're also there for it's like key moments somehow. Um, it's like they're not magnets, but they're what's the word for it? Catalyst. Catalyst. Yes. Catalyst. 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 Catalyst for change. A catalyst for change. So, can we have an example of a key moment? Oh. And can we call them in to create a key moment, or we call, or they just know? Oh, okay. Well, because, uh, when you say we, who's we? Human beings? Human beings. Um, we always want to know what, what's in it for us. <laughs> yeah, but uh, we don't, we can't necessarily identify key moments. Mm. Like key moments will be arranged by forces outside of us. Okay. Right. And so whatever whatever the universe or, you know, your guides or whatever is supposed to be happening to you, there could be key moments which have been identified, not by you, right? Mm -hmm. But um, dragons can be catalysts for those moments, or they can also be not omen. Do omens tell you when, when the moments are happening? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a sign. Yeah. So they can let you know. They can give you a hint. Right. That something's about to happen. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So you want some kind of example of this. I don't know. This happens all the time. They're saying. They're not giving me any examples because they happen all the time. You okay. And it could be that the signs can be just like you see a drawing in a book or something. Mm -hmm. um, and that gives you an insight or makes you change direction and 
That's a dragon. You know, but most, a lot of people don't heed them. Don't heed them. Right. Don't understand them. So it might be almost synonymous with what you think might even be an intuitive understanding. You suddenly have like some intuitive hint that something's about to change and you can heed it or not. Right. But the dragon sort of giving you a heads up. Right. Right. And they can be like omens or portents of danger. Like, oh, someone's about to walk in front of your car. So slow down. Right. No, <laughs> that's true. Or, or something bigger or more profound or something smaller. Yeah. So in a sense, they're, they're kind of like omnipresent. Interesting. Now, I have had um, in the past a decent relationship with a rose-colored and a white-colored dragon that were following me around. And then I think I stopped talking to them for some reason. <laughs> Are they still around? Um, so one was rose-colored, the yeah. other one was white. Yeah. And were they flying around you or were they sort of following um, you around? Well, they were omnipresent. Let's just put it that way. Okay. They weren't particularly flying around. Were they big or small? Um, I'd say medium sized. Right. Um, they didn't take up the rooms. They were just someone I could call upon. Well, you know, they're still there, but you haven't called upon them in a long time. So, you know, if you call upon them, they will, they will come. Okay. So they're still there. Yeah. I hadn't even really thought about them in a while. Huh. Interesting, huh? Do they have names? Not that I remember. <laughs> Did they breathe fire? There wasn't any real reason to breathe fire. They were just there as helpers. And it's been probably a couple of years at least since I've reached out to them. Mm. They came during COVID. <laughs> so it's not that long ago, but... Interesting. Yeah. It could be because there were dragons around you a couple of years ago. Could be this is why Angelo dropped into your place. Oh, maybe. Because he understood there's still some dragon energy here. Yeah. A sort of familiarity with dragons. Right. Interesting. So Angelo wants to go back to where he came from, right? Or does he want to be like somebody's <laughs> dragon helper here on Earth? <laughs> I think if you were to ask that to him now, he'd probably answer yes to the second question. <laughs> you know, because he thinks it's easier. Than where he came from. Yeah. Um, That's what he thinks at the moment. Right. But he's a baby and he doesn't really know. Yeah. And would it be in the highest and best for him to be with a caring dragon adult right now? Or to be on his own? Oh, no. It would be best for him to be with a, a caring adult dragon, preferably his mama. Okay. So back to the year of the dragon. Is there something that about why the Chinese had called it the year of the dragon for so many millennias well they still call it the year of the dragon i know they do but it's part of that so many is now but like where did that come from how did it start they don't really know oh they don't know no um they just know that they've been around for a long 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 time a long time and are there a lot more of them in china because they seem to honor them more as part of their culture oh that's interesting than like say here where Kids get into dragons, but then they sort of let them go. Oh, plus also here the dragons, or at least in Western culture, dragons have negative connotations also. So I'm just asking them. Well, okay, because there's no time or place, right? I don't, they don't think of it in terms of geography, mm -hmm. you know, so any dragons in China are also kind of like present here too. Okay. Um, yeah. Are, th are there millions of dragons or trillions of dragons or thousands of them? It's, it's, kind of, it's kind of like the fairies or the gnomes, right? 
they're they're omnipresent and they're everywhere. Sure. They they have not bothered to count themselves. They don't take censuses. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> there's lots of them. So there's there could be millions of billions. Um, what is the ideal habitat for a dragon? Oh, well, it depends what they like to eat. So there's different, they are different types. So some like tropical climates, some like clouds, some like Chinese climates. Yeah. It like, they are, they kind of like, like, oh, well, you could just as well ask, you know, what do they do all day? You know, because they have to find something to do. Mm -hmm. So well, are they, they just go traveling around? A lot of them just go traveling around. And is that because people don't ask them to do anything? Are they here as helpers? And if we asked them to do more, they would? Yes, they're saying yes. Okay. A lot of people are afraid of them. Oh, interesting. Well, and they, they as opposed to fairies and gnomes, which have so sort of like long histories of uh, legends of the living with people and, mm -hmm. and Helping people, you know. I don't think dragons have that. No, they have. They have a little bit of both. I mean, there. There's good dragons in our lore, but a lot of them are definitely sinister and fire breathing and right. Yeah, and they're saying also that they weren't always like dragons now as being righteous and honest and, and kind of like powerful, but in a good way, right? At one time, they were not that. Oh, so that's where that comes from. So there is some lore that, that's got some, based on some truth. Right. Interesting. So they understand then why there's some confusion about the dragons. Right. They do understand that. Uh, and they, I mean, they don't try to correct them like that. They're kind of happy doing what they're doing. <laughs> Just chilling out? Yeah. You know, flying around having an adventures or, you know, working with people like the handler. So speaking of the handlers, are they, are they done with their work with the mother and the babies? Okay. So they've, they've re-energized the mama and the babies and they're helping, helping them go back to whatever multidimensional space they had come from right now. Yes, right now. Well, what about Angelo? Well, okay, they're saying that he still needs some time in in our time, like a couple of days to get his energy fully back so he can actually join them. And he'll be able to find them? Yes. And the handlers will stay with him until that happens? They'll make that. They not necessarily will be with him like 24 hours a day, but they're going to keep an eye on him. All right. And make sure he gets the enough energy potion and whatever. So he'll be made stronger. Awesome. That's perfect. So do the handlers have any advice for us or words of dragon wisdom? Well, they're also saying that if you want to raise Angelo, you can do that too. You meaning sort of like a, a human being. Mm -hmm. Right. You don't necessarily, he doesn't necessarily have to go back. Well, would he get too big for the house? Well, no. Because he can make himself smaller. He can make himself smaller, make himself bigger. He doesn't necessarily have to be in the house all the time. But what about Ollie and Angelo? And Elliot too. She's a little, well, she, they're aware of him. Like they won't get anywhere near where Angelo is. Right. Well, it depends on why why you would be wanting to raise a dragon to to have a dragon as a companion um that that's what it depends upon what can they do for you what can you do for them <laughs> okay well, the first question is can i ride them around <laughs> yeah you could <laughs> so could ollie and ellie so all three of us could get on the same dragon oh yeah sure and go places. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> well, that'd be one reason to raise a dragon. Yeah. And so like, you know, it's not just a method of travel. Mm -hmm. It's, it's kind of like, you know, when those air, flying airplane squadrons do all kinds of tricks, fly upside down, do somersaults. Loops. Or yeah. Or, yeah. That's what they love doing. Oh, kind of like the dolphins, like 
Yeah. Spinning up in the Except air. Spinning in the air. And playing. Right. So. So the dragon's fairly happy. Well, yeah, yeah. They're, they're fairly happy. They're fairly happy. Are they funny? Um, do they have much of a sense of humor? Yeah, they do. Yeah. They're also good protectors. Aha. Uh -huh. So that'd be one reason to have a dragon would be to protect right. the house. The yeah, animals, I'm myself. Right. Right. The fairies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The gnomes, everybody that's here. And also, um, if they're if they're energetically healthy, right, they bring in tons more energy. They bring in more energy that's good. Yeah. Or expanded energy. Right. And would Angelo get along with the dragons that are already here? Which I don't talk to anymore. The <laughs> rose colored and the white colored dragons. Well, like I said, that's that's one of the reasons he, you know, he dropped uh, down and he came to your house because he felt them here. Right, right. Um, which is usually dragons will get along with each other. You know. Okay. So, but I mean, I'm thinking that I'll I'll raise them. <laughs> Diana, Diana wants it because I already got some dragons. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You well, got two already. Well, Angelo, you, looks like you've got choices. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, it's up to him, I guess. You got to, you can stay here for one or two more days, and then you got to make a decision when you're super strong what you want best for you. Right, you can go back up to, uh, you know, the dragon. Multi-dimensional space. You'd be with your family. Or you can stay with Karen. If, she, if you get along with Ollie. It's not me that's the problem. It's Ollie. Or you can come over to my place. Right. Where she has animals that also would need to get along with you. So, but it's, it's, uh, we'll check back in with you in a couple of days. Is there anything Angela would like to say to us? No, he's saying he's having a fun time here now. <laughs> no. Will Angelo um, stay on the little bed that we have for him? Yes. All right. That's awesome. All right. So is there anything else we should know about you're the dragon or this particular amount of drag the dragons that came through or how dragons can. They all, yeah. And once there's a kind of like a dragon connection, it's like. Other dragons know about this. So one dragon connection leads to another. Yeah. Okay. So I know that may, may be a little bit scary, but dragons are not scary. They're saying they're not scary. I'm not particularly scared of the dragons. I I have never been scared of dragons. However, it was Ollie that was agitated, and I didn't really understand why he was so agitated. Now I know. It's because not only is Angelo come into our space but angelo is sleeping in ollie's bed and <laughs> yeah sometimes that agitates people or other beings or cats right. they have a favorite bed or space and it gets occupied by someone else i can get ollie another bed so don't worry about that so angelo is saying he's he's kind of sorry that's okay he made it ollie so agitated um but I didn't, you know, I didn't totally freak out. He wasn't like losing hair over it or something. So, and we didn't understand. Um, it doesn't have to feel too bad about Ollie because, you know, Ollie's, Ollie's probably just somewhere in between for looking out for numero uno, which is himself. And, you know, he's also got his own cat wisdom and <laughs> knowledge. Right. So we have to be sure that everybody's on the up and up here. <laughs> but Ellie saw you too. And I have to say it was very cute last night when Ollie and Ellie were cuddling together because they didn't, they didn't want to get into your bed and they didn't like the other bed I had for them. I don't know. If <laughs> so we want to make sure that they're, they were your first and that they're taking, well taken care of the Ollie and Ellie. Yeah. Does he understand that? And do you understand that? Yeah. No, he's, he understands that. He doesn't want to, you know, 
push anybody out. He was just tired. Tired and scared. And yeah. Out of, yeah, and out of his melu and away from his family. All right. Does that conclude our podcast, Diana? I guess What's so. Today? All right. We may we may give an update on what Angelo has decided sometime in the future. Yeah. He'll know in a couple of days what he's going to be doing. All right. Much gratitude to all the dragons who showed up and uh, the handlers. The handlers and to Angelo and to my cats and to Diana and uh, Red Karen. <laughs> I wondered if you were going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you. Bye. Bye. That's all for this episode of the One to Nine Podcast. Thank you for listening and please sign up for our newsletter at one to nine podcast.com.